The next guideline is, if a polyatomic ion does not break apart during the reaction, count it as one large group. This just saves you time. So for instance, what I mean is this. Take a look at this phosphate ion, PO4. After the reaction, it's still there. It hasn't broken apart. Same thing with the sulfate ion over here. Before the reaction, it was SO4. After the reaction, it's still SO4. So instead of breaking it apart as an S and then an O and writing it down separately and then having to count it separately, I would rather just keep the compound ions together. Like so. So notice how I'm keeping the PO4 together and not separating it out into oxygens. So let's give our initial counts. I have three calciums on this side, and I have one calcium on this side. I have two of these phosphates on this side, and only one of these phosphates on this side. I have two hydrogens on this side, but three hydrogens on this side. And then I have one sulfate on this side, and one sulfate on this side. So let's leave the hydrogens for last and uh, balance out the calciums first. So I've got three calciums on this side. I can't reduce it any further, so I have to go up over here. And I can only play around the coefficients, remember that. So by inserting the coefficient here, I've changed everything, so I need to recalculate again. So now I have three calciums and three sulfates. By putting this three here, I don't affect any of these phosphates or hydrogens, so I don't need to recalculate those. Next on the list, let's take a look at PO4. I have two phosphates on this side, but only one on this side. Since I can't reduce this side, I must increase this side over here. And the only way to do it, let's put a 2 in the front. So by putting a 2 here, I now have changed my H's, how many hydrogens I have, from 3 to a 6. So cross that out, put a 6. How many phosphates do I have now? 2. Cross that out, put a 2. Take a look at the sulfates. I have three sulfates here only one sulfate here. Since I can't reduce this one, I have to increase this one, so let's put a 3. So 3 times 1 SO4 means I have 3 sulfates. 3 times 2 means I have 6 hydrogens. Since this does not affect any of these ones over here, I'm good to go with my recalculation, and lo and behold, everything is now balanced. Now, a word of advice. Notice how I'm crossing out uh, my previous counts one at a time. Uh, another reason why I like to do this is because it keeps track of how many times I've been playing around. Sometimes it gets really really messy and really really bad. Here's a little hint for you though. If you end up crossing, let's say one row of numbers here, one another column of numbers here, another column of numbers here, another column of numbers here, and you also end up crossing up to a number of numbers over here, and you number of numbers over here, and here, and here. Let's say you do several trials back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you end up crossing four whole columns on this side and four whole columns on this side. Chances are something's gone wrong. You just cannot balance it. I would say 95% of the uh, chemical equations you're going to be balancing in this course should be able to be balanced within four columns. If you go over that limit, in all likelihood you either made a miscalculation, and so it's impossible to balance it, or your chemical formulas are wrong. So double check them, make sure they follow the zero sum rule. All right, so setting up this T-chart is nice and that it helps you visualize it as well as gives you, uh, gives you a little means of double checking your work. All right, last one. So let's set up our chart. Now the last guideline is try to balance the lone elements last, meaning this guy over here, because this auction is by itself, try and leave it for last. The reason why I uh, prefer to leave it for last is because if I left this for last and I change this number, the only number I affect or the only element I affect is oxygen. On the other hand, if I left this compound for last and I change this number, then suddenly I'm not only changing hydrogen, but I'm also messing around with the sulfur count as well. And nothing sucks more than being so close to the end only to screw everything up because you have to change another element as well. All right, so let's set up our initial values. I have two hydrogens on this side, one sulfur, two oxygens. I have two hydrogens, one sulfur, and three oxygens. Be careful, a lot of students forget that they'll just look here and say two oxygens, but they'll forget there's also another one over here, and they add up to three oxygens, so be careful with that one. 
All right, so let's start off with the sulfurs. Uh, they're all balanced. Fantastic. Leave oxygen for last. Let's try hydrogen. Okay, that one's also balanced. So I have oxygen that needs to be balanced. Whenever I see a 2 and a 3, the number you should be thinking of is 6. So how can I make 6 oxygens on this side and 6 oxygens on this side? So what I'd probably want to do is put a 3 here, so I have 6 oxygens. And over here, in order to make 6 oxygens, I would probably want to go 4 over here. That way I have 4 oxygens plus 2 oxygens makes 6 oxygens altogether. But in so doing, I've messed up the count. So let's recalculate. 4 times 2, 8 hydrogens now. 4 times O equals to 4 oxygens plus the 2, 6 oxygens. And of course on this side, 2 times 3, 6 oxygens. So my sulfurs are nice, my oxygens are nice, but my hydrogens are a little messed up. On this side, I need to have 8 hydrogens, so I'm going to put a 4 in the front. So 2 times 4 equals 8. Now my hydrogens are balanced, but then I messed up my sulfurs. 4 times 1 equals to 4 sulfurs. And now we got to jump back on this side. In order to make this into 4 sulfurs, I'm going to put a 4 in the front, so it becomes 4 sulfurs. But now I've changed my oxygens. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12 oxygens. So the only way to make this into 12 oxygens is if I erase the 3 and put in a 6 instead. So now 2 times 6 equals 12. And there we have it, 12, 12, 4, 4, 8, 8. Do you see what I mean by uh, filling out the columns? There's one column, there's two columns. I'm starting a third column here. I went one column, oh wait, I'm sorry, one column, two columns, and then I'm starting a third column as well. If I'd gone a fourth column and a fourth column on this side, and I still couldn't solve it, Chances are something got messed up, either I made an addition error, or I couldn't count properly, or more likely, I made or I wrote the wrong compounds. I didn't follow zero sum rules somewhere along the way, so I have a compound that doesn't exist. So it's very, very, very hard, if not impossible, to balance something that does not exist. So there you have it, balancing equations through inspection, also known as trial and error. Uh, just the only other hint I can give you is Try to organize your information as best as possible. Uh, leave yourself lots of space in the front so you can erase and change the coefficients as necessary. And just do things systematically.